Zach Edwards here with another, uh, let's see, we'll do Game Design Wednesday. It's, a, it's always a, a guess if I'm going to do a Whatever Wednesday, where I can talk about whatever I want, or I'm going to do a Game Design Wednesday. But I think this is great while I'm out in the middle of nowhere, Idaho, uh, on vacation, that I can tell you about certain things on the game industry that are essential to know if you're going to design games. Um, one big one. And this thing's huge, and I've talked about it a little bit at each point. And this is finding your niche. This is finding the group of people, the community that you want to support your, to support your game. Now, when it comes to, and I've talked about this like, I think last week or two weeks ago, you have to find out if that niche is full. So, gaming industry. 3,200 plus games every year coming out. Only 200 are allowed in the retail stores, so there's not many there. And then all of a sudden, and that's a lot of those are new games, or, or, or old games. Most of them, probably like 80 to 90% are old games, not the newest ones that just came out of the market. So where do all the rest of them go? Well, most of them actually fall apart. They go away, they don't stick around for a long time. So, um, the way to overcome that, as I talked about last week, was to actually find your niche, find your community, the people that will support you throughout the years. Now, there's, I'm going to explain what happens in the educational realm when you're trying to create an educational game. So right now, educational video games outside of public schools, not that popular. So what they do is they get into public schools, and these are video games, so not even uh, board or card games. They get them popular in schools, and the kids want to play them outside of schools. And so in school, you get it for free. Outside of school, you have to pay for them. Now, those have become some semi-popular, but when you have like things like Fortnite and Minecraft still, I mean, Minecraft's been, what, five years out, ten, uh, six years out, and it's still going very strong. I mean, it's not as it used to be, but it's still, most, a lot of people are still playing it. Um, and you have other games that go, come out all the time. So, these are video games, but let's go to card games. Educational games. Okay, so in all these, the six years that we've been back, Historical Conquest, uh, the only game that's really been out there that's been that popular, or actually there's two of them. One's called Timeline, and one's called two, uh, Constitution Quest. These were both educational games, one on the Constitution, of course, one on Timeline, which is history. Those are the only two games that really have become very much a competitor to us at all. But if you look around, Constitution Quest is barely gone, is basically gone. Yes, they do sell the games. Mostly retailers take care of them and retailers that go to educational conventions. That's it. You don't find it much anywhere else. They tried a big box store, it didn't work. Um, and so educational games have always had two problems with them. One, is that they are thought of to be, and I'm not downing any, I'm not trying to uh, demonize or down any game that's out there or uh, say they're, they're not the best game ever. I'm not saying anything about them. But this, uh, the stereotype of the educational game is it's cheesy, it's poorly made, so the gameplay is poorly made, and three, it's, it doesn't continue. What happens when you're done with an educational game? Let's take math for instance. What happens after you've learned addition, subtraction? You throw the game away, you put it on your shelf, it sits there for 10, 20 years, you might even give it away. Uh, not as likely. You might try to sell it. Not many people buy educational games at, at garage sales. So they don't go on and live with you. History games, they don't, they don't continue. So when we created Historical Conquest, we had those two thoughts in mind. One, that they don't continue on with you, and two, they, we didn't want to do cutesy. We didn't want to do this, um, uh, again, I'm not trying to, to demonize any other game out there, but we, we didn't want to do low quality at all. And a lot of the educational games are semi-low quality. A little thought into them, um, all these different things. But when we created Historical Conquest, we knew that our community wanted something that was high quality and epic game that would continue on even after you've learned your history it's just a fun game and you're still learning uh, a lot of times you don't even know that you're learning but you're still learning and so this is why 
historical conquest has been such a success is because we've been there all the time. We created a community. We're six years out and we're just getting bigger. Our support, um, those that support us, our community are just getting stronger. Uh, we have probably the best community, the best customers I've ever met in any, any gaming industry. Um, because they're supportive and they don't just leave you just because you're old or just because whatever. We created a mission when it comes to our games and a lot of them support our mission. Make education fun, to make history fun. So that's what we've done. So again, when it comes to com creating a community, don't just go into any community and say, okay, I'm gonna go people that like dragons. Great, or people that like zombies. Okay, you know how many zombie games are put out there every year? I was talking to a lady at the convention at one of the homeschooling conventions. Her company created a, a zombie game. No one would buy it. You know why? Because there's too many zombie games. Dragon games, same thing. Too many dragon games. It's, it's a swamped market, the gaming industry. But it's not impossible to become a very big success. And that all stems from you need to find your niche, your community people that will support you for a long time and make sure that they are not it's it's the best if they're not served as much as they can be so if they're not games out there that already speak their language um, already everything that they already wanted and already need if you can find that group they will stick with you for a long long time so that is always my first part of my first advice to someone trying to create a game Find that niche before you even before you even think of a game theme or um, even a game. Don't even go to the game design at all if you want to make if you want to be a success. Just put it out that way. If you want to be a success, don't worry about the game at all. First, that's not the first thing you do. The first thing you do is you find your community, find the group of people you want to serve. Most likely, they're somewhat similar to you. And that you are able to enjoy their company and serve them. Mine, I actually did a little backwards because this was actually, as you know, Historical Conquest was an English assignment. It was a one page essay. A one page essay. I mean, it was supposed to be a product that would change the world, but it was never supposed to go anywhere. It was supposed to be a regular essay, but it did. And it continues to. That was 16, 17 years ago. Now, it did sell, sit on the shelf for 10 years, of course, but now it's back. And because it's back, we're able to be worldwide. That's why we're able to be actually like five countries. Okay, so we're in five countries. But at the same time that we're five countries, we're all online, so we're basically worldwide. And so we did it again backwards, and you could do it backwards, but if I could start over, I would have thought of basically the homeschooling industry, games are essential for a lot of them. They like game learning. So finding them, and then finding the topic that's not satisfied by certain games. And that's, of course, that is exactly history. Now there is a, a card game out there called Timeline. I will tell you my competitors. Um, there's no community around it. It's a game, you buy a game, you're done. You play it at home a few times, you put it away. We're creating something that's so much better than Timeline because we're creating an interactive site. Go back to next last Thursday, the Sneak Peek Thursday. Oh, absolutely amazing what we're doing. That site is going to be a game changer for every student who's learning history. I can't tell you everything that we're doing in there, but that's basically enough. You'll see if you see the video from last week. So we'll catch you on next week. Thanks for joining us on this Game Design Wednesday. And we will see you soon. Let's check us out tomorrow for our sneak peek Thursday and what's coming up next. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. If you have any comments or questions, add them to the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next, uh, we'll see you tomorrow actually. Take care. Bye.